I feel like Hinduism kind of takes the throne of being uh, the sort of poster image of what people think spirituality is. And a lot of th people think Hinduism means what in, what's in Sanskrit is called Advait, Advait in, or Advaita. And uh, Advait means oneness. So people think, a lot of people think spirituality and Hinduism mean oneness, or that, that's what Hinduism means, that it, it means that what Hin, like the, if you get to the core tenets of Hinduism, it says that we're all one, that we're one with God, and that everything is this sort of flowing creative energy that's lost itself in the illusion of separateness as a way to explore its creative capacities and um, just flow through infinity. A big part of Hinduism says that. Um, but it's not the only part of Hinduism, and a part that I really like and that I've been getting into these last few years, or the last year particularly, is called Achintya Beta Beta Tattva, which means that everything is simultaneously one and separate. And this is also a Hindu, um, this is a philosophy within Hinduism, or Sanatana Dharma is what they call it in India. And this, this basically, and you could basically celebrate or, or worship any god or um, take part in any religion and still consider yourself a Hindu. There's not one way to, to be a Hindu, despite what uh, you might find out, like on the internet and stuff like that. So Chintya Beta Beta Tattva comes from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is a famous saint from, I think he's from South India. Where's he from? Bangalore? I forget where he's from. I, I never understood this back in the day. When I, first, I heard this quote, people used to tell me this all the time. When I used to hang out in the Hare Krishna temples, I've been to all, I, I used to spend forever hanging out in these Hare Krishna temples all around America. And this is what they believe there. They would always say, it's all, it's, you are one with God, but you're also separate from God. And I was always just like, yeah, but you're just saying that I'm one with God still. Just because you're saying I'm separate, but I'm one, that's just language. I'm, I'm one with God. Because that's you can't be separate in one, that's language. This is a quote that I actually always say. They always say, um, the individual soul and God are the same in quality but different in quantity, like a sun and its rays. Like a sun and its rays, they're both one. And uh, they're both one in quality, but they're different in quantity. Like the rays aren't the core. And that never resonated with me. But that's kind of the quote that people always throw at you in context to this. A sun and its rays are one in quality, but different in quantity. Um, I never liked that. But that's a, that's a quote that you might hear from people that preach this philosophy. But the way that it really started to make sense to me, and where I was like, I actually appreciate this a lot more, is um, when I realized that as far as I can work out, the universe appears to be this kind of infinite creation. Or at least, um, at least really, really, really big. And everything on this planet takes an ego. They take, they take a sense of self. They take a sense of identity. Which, they take a sense or a position of separateness from its environment. Um, my dogs don't feel one. I don't feel one. You don't feel one. I'm sure these trees feel a sense of uh, I-ness, bugs, tigers. Everything has a sense of meanness, fish. Everything feels pain, everything wants to eat, everything has this basic instinct of ego, which is a, which is a biological survival mechanism that everything in nature would, it makes sense that we have egos. So when I started thinking about this, that nature is forever producing egos, I would imagine other planets are like this too. That this is just a natural, this is um, a primary in life, is that you have to feel separate as a way to progress. Because if you didn't feel separate, you'd just be walking into traffic. So, when you see that reality, that, that the universe is infinitely creating separateness, then it is both one and different because it's always producing something to feel separate. This is what made me be like, okay, yeah, I understand how it's, how it's one and different. 
Because if it's if it's eternally doing this, if the universe is just lost in an eternal, infinite creation, some kind of sacred spiral that's just going into itself, but it's producing something always that feels separate, then it is separate and one. Does that make sense? This kind of blew my mind. I was like, okay, yeah, that it makes sense that paradoxes can exist at once. And this kind of, in a way, releases some of the tensions I feel about not always feeling at one because sometimes I'll feel a little bit, I'll feel a little bit like disappointed in myself for, for, for not always consistently feeling my oneness with things. I'll maybe feel like I'm off my practice or something like that, but I feel like it's impossible to consistently feel at one because I need to eat sometimes. I need to use the bathroom sometimes. I need to present myself and bathe myself and have relationships with people. And um, this, I, this I think cures that. This is, this is the answer to that problem, that um, we are both one and separate. What I think this means is that we are, that the creation needs to be sustained from the creator. So whatever, if something is creating something, the source needs to, ha needs to sustain the creation for it to exist. So the universe is always creating something. Always creating something, and this creation takes a form of separateness. It loses itself in duality. Does, that, does, it make, does this make sense? God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, is a self-sustaining force that's infinitely losing itself in this mirage of separateness. Simultaneously one and different. Ajintia beta beta tattva. This is tattva, truth. <sighs> this is a complicated thing to talk about. So what I'm trying to say is that even though the universe is one, it's forever losing itself in duality. And if it's forever one and forever losing itself in duality, then we have to, I think, accept that paradoxes are possible to exist at the same time. So what do you think about this? This is just to offer a kind of alternative perspective to the, uh, rep to the repetition of we are one that everyone sort of regurgitates, which I believe we are all one. And if there is a time where this philosophy is beneficial, it's more now than ever. We need to realize our oneness. But um, I also think it's... We can't completely um, pretend we don't exist as individuals because there is a part of us that that um, that 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 is an, an individual. You know, I just made a video talking about how ego death is a bit of a, an ego trip, thinking that you can completely kill your ego, or that this term ego death in itself sort of implies that you need to kill something that's inside of you, that a part of yourself needs to die for you to somehow have this enlightening experience. And I think that's a, um, a, bad, a bad way to, um, to look at this experience because there's not, a, there's not any part of you that you need to remove, that you need to kill. Um, it's just about, it's about recognizing parts, it's, a, it's about ultimately recognizing who you are and who you are not. You are not ultimately your ego. Your thoughts aren't who you are, but they do, they are a part of you. You know, you're, you're not your body either, you know? Your body's been growing and changing forever, but you've just been sort of the thing behind it, watching it all change. You get sick, you get happy, you get sad, but the thing watching it doesn't change. You're just watching the changes happen. So I think that in a way, um, the ego, it exists. You can't say it doesn't exist. It's useful. This is a useful tool. This is a, this is the, this is a part of who we are. The ego is just as much you as the body is. Having a spirituality that, that doesn't have limitations, it, it, the, more, the more we broaden our spiritual ideologies, the less limitations and dogma that it has, the closer I think we get to truth. Because I think truth is, um, well, truth, Truth, truth doesn't demand you to become something. I think um, once we stop becoming something is when we sort of are confronted with truth. Think about um, when a relationship, when you're in a big, deep relationship with someone that you love and you guys break up, you stop 
becoming something. You guys stop trying to become something and you're confronted with truth, the reality of that you just are. You know, just as beingness, that's all you're left with. You're left with the beingness. And um, that was, I'm not trying to get dark here. Truth isn't always dark, but it is temporary. And there is a beauty, there is a beauty in that. And I'm kind of just going off on a tangent now. And uh, yeah, my name is Dakota. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you could, click subscribe. And uh, let's be friends. Mucho gracias. Uh, peace out. I'll talk to you guys next time. Check out my clothing company, Stay Happy, Stay Weird, if you would like to support this channel or get yourself a brand new t-shirt. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I got some cool stuff over there. So, peace out.